Hi guys, welcome to Tutor IMG's short medical series. So um, we're going to be taking a look at um, some overlapping um, psychiatric diagnoses. And I'm going to be talking about grief, how to differentiate it from complicated grief, and when to call it a major depressive disorder. Now, when we talk about grief and um, the process of uh, complicated grief, our main concern is always going to be bereavement, right? Bereavement is a loss of a loved one. And when there is bereavement, people will experience grief. That's the emotion. Grief can be acute grief or it can be complicated grief. Now, what is the difference between acute grief and complicated grief? When we are concerned about acute grief, the focus in uh, both these situations, of course, is going to be on the loss of the loved ones, right? And experiences of um, sadness, experiences of painful emotion, what is that painful emotion? On the boards, I want you to watch out for keywords like guilt, anger, okay? And um, bouts of crying. But the interesting thing with grief that is just acute is that there are periods of respite where the patient actually feels a little close to their normal um, and they have thoughts and reminiscing about some of the happier times, right? This kind of outlook, of course, uh, promises a better outcome. So patients who have periods of respite are going to have a better outcome. Now, please don't, um, you know, don't take this to mean that words like insistent thoughts, right? Um, or memories of the deceased means that this is not acute grief. It is still acute grief, but as long as the term is insistent and not persistent, you know, uh, we can still keep it in the category of acute grief, All right? Now, in the case of acute grief, again, what I don't want you to think is that having hallucinations is a marker of complicated grief. It's not. A patient can have hallucinations about the deceased as long as the hallucinations are not um, self-deprecatory, as in like they're not asking the patient to harm themselves and they're not insulting or humiliating the patient, um, telling them how they were worthless or how they should just kill themselves, that then becomes a different sort of problem. But as long as the hallucinations are just about the deceased and about how the patient misses the deceased, that is still in the category of acute grief. Usually the time duration that you can expect for acute grief is going to be six months. In some cultures, it can even be up to 12 months. But in this time frame, the patient will experience, as I mentioned, respite. Now, however, in complicated grief, what we need to understand is it's acute grief, all of the acute grief, but now it's going on for longer. So prolonged time, and greater intensity of all that the patient was feeling. Plus, now the patient is turning dysfunctional, which means that they have moments when they just cannot even work. Getting to work um, and performing daily activities becomes a chore, right? They need to have a lot of proximity to the deceased person. What that means is that they will um, be found hugging their belongings, you know, maybe sleeping in their bed, um, holding on to their, um, you know, objects that remind them, smelling their towels. So things that will obviously point towards, uh, you know, an impaired level of functioning. Plus, of course, there's suicidal ideation. Now, I know that's starting to sound a lot like major depression, but the incidence, the, the way I want you to differentiate this from major depression 
is the fact that although there is suicidal behavior, the suicidal behavior in grief is going to be because the patient wants to go and meet their loved one. Whereas the suicidal ideation or you know, thought processing in MDD is because they feel worthless, right? They have a disappointment in self. It's all about themselves, right? The sadness that's described in MDD is going to be pervasive, coloring all aspects of their life, not just sadness um, and constant sad thoughts about the deceased. The guilt that these patients feel um, in MDD will again be pervasive. It will be about everything, a guilt about um, you know, not being able to do well in life, not being worthy, being worthless, whilst in bereavement or in complicated grief, the guilt is all about not being a good enough caregiver, not having done enough, being the wrong or the deceased being the wrong person to have died. If the question mentions a lot of um, a lot of these symptoms, but along with that, it also you know points towards the deceased constantly. These thoughts all link to the deceased. Then it's complicated grief. If it doesn't, then it's MDD. Treatment for complicated grief is going to be CBT plus SSRIs. Acute grief usually does not need any treatment. And MDD, of course, you know, it's the usual antidepressants. And that's discussed separately. So I hope this will help you pick out the correct choice on the boards. If you like the video, continue to support us by subscribing to the channel.